All right, ask me what my favorite way to heat a home is. Go ahead, Lou, what's your favorite way? Hot water heat. But there's a lot of differences when it comes to these systems. There's steam, there's hot water recirculating, there's different types of boilers, radiators, you name it. Well, we're gonna learn about it today. We're here at local 597's Pipe Fitter Training Center where all of these men and women are learning how to install, how to maintain, and how to advise you on the best way to heat your home. Come with me. Rick Gebka is an instructor here and he knows a lot about heating systems, including steam radiators. Now this early type of home heating worked because steam travels through a system without the help of pumps. We'd have a boiler that would create steam from water and then the steam would push out into the system and then as it condensed back to water, it would give up its heat. Now you guys aren't installing steam anymore, right? Not unless it would be a remodel or an addition. Why? Is it not as flexible or what's the reasoning? Well, the radiators take up room, the radiators are hot, you know, the air gets pushed out and the right. steam takes its place. And so we kind of transitioned away from that. One of my favorite ways to heat a home is with hot water heat. And you've got sure. some examples of what's going in right now. Now, same idea, right? There's a boiler. We have a boiler. And, and tell me what this is right here. This is a rental radiator. This would be our most modern choice in baseboard radiation. They're made out of steel, okay. so they have, they have good thermal mass. Okay. We can get them in horizontal patterns, vertical patterns, columns, many different shapes, sizes, curves. And you can just put them one next to another, next to another, depending on the demand. Yes, or you can buy them in various lengths, so you may not even have to sell. Oh, wow. Now, metal fin tube, which is something I used to put in in houses that I remodeled 25 years ago. Describe how this works. Well, we have a, a copper tube, which conducts heat very well, and then we also incorporate these aluminum fins. So this really transfers heat very well. And then it's inside an enclosure, and cool air migrates from the beneath the enclosure, right. is warmed up and exits out the top. It's uh, probably your least expensive way to install hydronics in your home. But this denser material has more residual properties, right? Correct. To hold the heat and dispense the heat. Correct, one of the things about hydronic heating systems are we count on the thermal mass of the radiation to slow down the heating and cooling cycle. Unlike uh, a forced air system where you know it turns on and you feel the heat and then it cools down. On off. On off, this is a consistent system that, uh, I mean, that you really like. A hydronic system, you may never even know it's on. Speaking of consistent heat, I want to show you a few innovations in radiant in-floor heating. I'm meeting up with Mike Gagan from Midwest Boiler and Draft at a renovation project. This home is about 2,500 square feet of wood floor. It's been demoed down to its original subfloor. So we've got a system that goes down over the subfloor. It has an aluminum extractor that gets snapped into the track that's been routed out, and then the tubing is snapped in. And then after that, the contractor or homeowner applies either his tile or his wood floor. What about below grade applications, like if you're going right on top of concrete? Customers think we have to come in with jackhammers and break up all their concrete. We have a system, it's about three quarters of an inch thick, it's made of a composite plastic, has a built-in insulation, and then the top is a galvanized steel. It's a floating floor system, so it's not affixed to the floor in any way, but it uh, works real well for moist conditions, anywhere where there might be water, and once the water is dried, it goes right back. It, it's not affected or creates no mold. Say you've got a finished floor in an area. There are systems now where you can come from underneath, right? Yes, it's basically called a staple up. So it's as simple as removing any insulation you might have, drilling a few holes, fixing these clips or panels, and snapping the tubing in, and then reinstalling an insulation so you have an air gap. Years ago, I remember we did a project where uh, we put some tubing down the HVAC contractor we were working with, and, and they poured concrete over the top of it. There are systems, those systems still exist as well, right? That, that was the old traditional way, and it's still done in unfinished basements. Insulation and the new ones today are also insulation and a method of affixing the tubing in a very labor-free environment. So right. you just walk the tubing onto the insulation and that creates your finished product. So in my opinion, heating your home with hot water is the way to go. Very efficient and very comfortable. But as you can see, there are lots of options. We have more information for you on our website, housesmartstv.com. You guys need more piping? 